IV characteristics of a diode in the circuit given below are the IV characteristics of a circuit in a circuit given below are plus minus 10 volts 1 kilo ohm i v this i equals to v minus actually it has to be capital v only it's given it is minus I equals to V minus 0.7 divided by 500 amperes for V greater than or equals to 0 0.7 volts. 0 amperes for V less than 0 0.7 volts. Okay. Find the current in the circuit. Find the current in the circuit. Find the current in the circuit. Okay. Now, this diode is having a cutting voltage of, this is indicating from 0.7 current is existed. Therefore, current flowing through this one is I equals to 10 minus 0.7 divided by 1K. 10 minus 0 0.7 divided by 1k. Now, one minute, sorry. It is not like this. See, apply this KVL. 10 minus i into 1k minus v is equals to 0. One equation. The second equation, i equals to v minus 0.7 by 500, second equation. 10 minus I into 1K, applying KVL, 10 minus 1K into I minus voltage across this one is 0. Already one equation is given for greater than 0.7 volts. I equals to V minus 0.7 by 500. Here one, two un uh, variables here were, two unknown variables two equations. Solve these two. That means C here. Substitute I here. 10 minus I. V minus 0.7 into 10 power 3. That is 1000 by 500 minus V is equals to 0. This is 2. Okay. So 10 minus 2V minus 1 minus minus plus. Plus 1.4 minus V is equals to 0. That is 11.4 minus 3 volts equals to 0. Therefore, V equals to 11.4 by 3 volts. Once again, see here, from this one, there are two unknown variables are there. Simplify this one, you are going to get this one. It is 10 minus we are substituting the high, V minus 0 0.7 into 500, 1K, 1K means 1000, therefore this 2, minus 2V, one, plus 1.4, minus V is equals to 0, simplify this one, you are going to get the answer, V, okay, now but in the problem you ask to find out I, substitute V here, you will get I, substitute whatever the value you are going to get it here, substitute you get I. The current value you are going to get it as 6.2 milli amperes. 6.2 milli amperes. Next problem. Okay. 
in a uniformly doped abrupt pn junction in a uniformly doped abrupt pn junction the doping level of the n side is the doping level of the n side is four times the doping level of p side the doping level of n side is four times of the doping level of p side that is nd is 4 na okay the ratio of the depletion layer width is the ratio of depletion layer width is at okay we are having one equation wd n w n nd equals to wp na so w wn w wn by wp equals to na by nd na by nd that is 1 by 4 see n type semiconductor is heavily doped therefore width of the depletion layer in p region is more the depletion layer will penetrate more into the lightly doped region therefore width of the depletion layer in p side is more so wp equals to 4 times of wn width of the depletion layer in p side is more in n side is small okay that's satisfying that next problem it's a theory question it's gate 2013 gate question in a forward biased pn junction in a forward biased pn junction the sequence of events the sequence of events that best describes that best describes the mechanism of current flow is the mechanism of current flow is the mechanism of current flow is option a injection then followed by diffusion subsequent diffusion then followed by recombination of minority carriers recombination of minority carriers injection diffusion recombination of minority carriers option b injection subsequent drift generation of minority carriers generation of minority carriers option b option c extraction then diffusion then generation of minority carriers option d extraction drift then generation of minority carriers okay now see you are applying a pn junction uh, pn junction you are taking a forward bias you are applying so you are applying a forward bias means it is supplying the charge carriers that means it is injecting injecting the minority carriers once the holes comes into this one holes comes into this one so what is going to happen here more number of holes here less number of holes diffusion takes place so injection diffusion once holes comes here your electrons will be there this some of the holes will recombine with existing minority carriers electrons therefore injection diffusion recombination of minority carriers injection diffusion recombination of minority carriers is the answer clear once again i am repeating we are applying like this we are forward bias it is supplying the charge carriers higher potential is supplying the charge carriers holes that means you are injecting the holes into the p type semiconductor injecting the holes into the p type semiconductor therefore in p type semiconductor we are injected once we are injected here more number of holes here less number of holes therefore because of diffusion there is a movement of carriers from p to n that is called diffusion once holes comes here they will recombine with the existing some of the holes will recombine with the existing electrons 
that means recombination of minority carriers taken place. It's clear? Therefore, injection, diffusion, recombination. Next problem. circuit shown in the circuit shown assume that assume that the voltage drop across forward bias diode is voltage drop across forward bias diodes is 0.7 volts 0.7 volts the small signal input is small signal input is vi equals to vp cos omega t where Vp equals to 100 millivolts, Vi equals to Vp cos omega t, where Vp equals to 100 millivolts. Then find, then find output AC voltage, then find output AC voltage for the below figure, for the below figure. Assume eta equals to 1. This value is 12.7 volts. 12.7, here it is Vi. Then you ask to calculate what is VAC? VAC. Now, this is a DC voltage, this is a AC voltage. If you want to find out the AC voltage, this is only we have to apply. There is no need of this one. But he is given this one for some other reason. We will see that one. You want voltage across this two, AC voltage. This is the supply voltage. Therefore, voltage between these two one is can be calculated by voltage divider theorem. What is that voltage divider theorem says? VAC equals to total supply voltage that is VI. Total supply voltage VI into that resistance. That means here some resistance is there. What is that resistance? RAC will take it by RAC plus 9900. That means we have to find out the RAC. What is the formula for RAC? Its four diodes are there. Each diode is replaced by an AC equivalent circuit. If you see here, I said diode and a capacitor. This is R small r, this is CD. For low frequency applications, CD will not comes into the picture. Small signal, low frequency signals, only CD comes into the picture at high frequencies. Therefore, CD will not be there. Only R will be there. That's called forward bias. Therefore, it is denoted by RF. So, each diode is replaced by a resistance like this. RF, 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 RF. How many RFs are there? Four. And all are in series. Therefore, RF plus RF plus RF plus RF. Therefore, RAC equals to 4 RF. What is RF? The, what is the resistance? It's an AC resistance. What is AC resistance formula? Eta Vt by I. Here it's AC current. Uh, here, okay. This is eta is 1. 26 millivolts by I. 
scatoli this is idc what is idc that means this dc voltage minus this dc voltage divided by this resistor okay how to find out the current flowing through this one v1 minus v2 by this resistance what is v1 12.7 minus what is the voltage already i said dc equivalent circuit resistor diode is replaced by a cutting voltage like this okay and there is an internal resistance of r that r we are neglecting therefore it is replaced by this one what is the voltage drop across each diode 0.7 silicon diode 0.7 0.7 okay 2.8 divided by resistance 9900 okay find out this idc after getting idc substitute here you will get r after getting r substitute here rac after getting rac substitute here then you will get the vac is clear first find out idc then substitute here you will get the smaller once you got smaller that's nothing but rf you will get this one then you will get rac rac you know if you got it means substitute here you will get vi that's nothing but vac i think here rf you will get it as 20 here it is 1 milli ampere here you will get 25 ohms 100 ohms therefore here it's 100 will cancel so it's simply 1 into cos omega t answer is final answer is vac equals to 1 into or 1 milli oh, sorry 1 milli volt into cos omega t 1 means 1 milli volt into cos omega t that is the answer next problem yes in the circuit shown in the circuit shown assume identical silicon diodes assume identical silicon diodes find the find the voltage across the diodes voltage across the diodes the circuit is like this assume identical silicon diodes find the voltage across the diodes that means parallel combination same thing will be resulted clear now in this case assume this diode d1 assume this diode d2 it's higher potential therefore the diode d1 is forward bias the diode d1 is forward bias means current flows in this direction that is i1 what about diode d2 diode d2 is here cathode is connected to higher potential therefore it is reverse bias it is reverse bias means what is the direction of current this arrow mark indicates current direction when it is forward bias when it is reverse bias it is io2 the main current comes like this apply kcl at point p apply KCL at point P. So what we are going to get it? I is entering. I one is leaving. I O two also leaving. This can be written as 
the diode D1 is forward by us. Forward by us current is given as I0 into E power V by eta Vt minus 1. And is given both are identical. Therefore, both will have same reverse saturation current. Therefore, here plus I0. This is I. Therefore, I equals to I0 into E power V by eta Vt minus I0 plus I0. Since identical, both reverse saturation currents are same. This, this will cancel. Therefore, I by I0 is equals to E power V by eta Vt. Therefore, from this one, V equals to eta Vt ln of I by I0. In this figure, the voltage across the diodes, parallel combination diodes is eta Vt ln of I by I0. It's clear? Next one. Calculate the next problem. Calculate the voltage across each diode. Calculate the voltage across each diode in the circuit shown. Consider consider identical germanium diodes. Consider identical germanium diodes. Identical germanium diodes are operating at identical germanium diodes are operating at room temperature are operating at room temperature the circuit is like this diode D1 diode D2 what is given calculate the voltage across each diode V1 and V2 Assume identical germanium diodes operating at sorry identical germanium diodes operating at room temperature operating at room temperature. Now see here the diode D1 is forward bias. Diode D2 is reverse bias. For a forward bias diode I equals I0 into E power V by eta Vt minus 1. The other way of simplifying that expression that is I equals to current. If you are expressing the in terms of other one voltage equals to V equals to eta Vt ln of 1 plus I by I naught. This also, that I equals to I naught into E power V by eta Vt or this one. Okay. This is the voltage for the first diode, I1. Okay. Now, it is a germanium diode, therefore it is 1. Operating at room temperature, 26 into 10 power minus 3, ln of 1 plus now, see here, the current flowing through here it is I1. This is the diode is forward by us. What is the current flowing? This diode is reverse by us. Current direction is like this. What is the current flowing through this one? I over 2. In a circuit, current should be same or not? In a closed loop, current has to be same. That means I1 equals to I2. O2. I1 equals to IO2. Therefore, this is IO2 by IO2. This current flowing through this diode has to be same as the current flowing through this diode. This diode is forward bias. This diode is reverse bias. Reverse bias, a small current called reverse saturation current flows and it is opposite to the main current. This is the arrow mark indicates current direction. But now it flows like this. Opposite to the main current. So, this one and this one has to be same. Therefore, this. 
will cancel 2. 26 into 10 power minus 3 ln of 2. This is V1. You ask to find out V2 also. It is given it as 2 volts. In the problem it is given it as 2 volts. Apply KVL now. Apply KVL now. 2 minus. Now see here. What is the voltage here? Plus, here minus. Here plus, here minus. Therefore, minus V1. For this one, divert this is V plus, here minus. Plus V2 is equals to 0. Therefore, V2 equals to 2 minus V1. Whatever the calculated value, substitute here, you will get V2. This is V1. V1 will be larger or V2 will be larger? The diode D1 is forward bias. Forward bias maximum voltage drop is 0.6 or 0.7. Reverse bias maximum voltage drop will be there. So, across the diode D2, that V2 will be larger than V1. It's clear? Next. I think we have done sufficient number of problems. Still there are some more problems are there because since we have caught so many different varieties of problems, I think we will stop it here, the problems in PN junction. Now we will go for other diode called Ginar diode. Ginar diode. This is heavily doped diode heavily doped diode it is invented by the scientist Jinnar hence it is called Jinnar diode the symbol of the Jinnar diode is like this it is also a two terminal semiconductor device similar to PN junction. The difference is it can be operated in it can be operated in breakdown region. What is meant by breakdown region? I will explain. Okay. It can be operated in breakdown region. What is meant by breakdown? For a normal diode we have seen VI characteristics in forward bias like this reverse bias like this. As further voltage increases, at certain point of time, the breakdown taken place. But the normal diode is not, this current is so large that normal PN junction diode is not capable of withstanding that much current. It is not designed to handle that much current or that much power. Current is increasing means power dissipation also increases. Therefore, it will damage permanently. Therefore, VI characteristics of a PN junction is like this only. If you operate beyond certain voltage called as maximum reverse voltage, the device is going to, the diode is going to damage permanently. Whereas, Jena diode is designed such that it is capable of withstanding larger powers because of heavily doped. Therefore, the VI characteristics are like this. This is called VZ. This is called V gamma. This is VF. This is IF. This is IR. This is VR. Now, what is the meaning of this thing? Okay, this is called breakdown, breakdown voltage or it is also called as knee voltage and this region is called breakdown region. What is meant by breakdown region? It is the region where voltage remains constant, nearly remains constant, but current increases rapidly. Okay? Suddenly current increases, but voltage will remain constant. 
normal PM junction diode is not capable of withstanding that much current or that much power it is going to damage whereas Gina diode is designed mainly to work in this region only ok hence the Gina diode is operated in this region now Gina diode and PN junction diode forward bias there is no difference at all forward bias PN junction diode forward bias Gina diode VA characteristics are similar same ok V gamma cutting voltage will be exist for that one this one 0.6 volts 0.2 volts same thing is same so under forward bias condition there is no difference between the Gina diode and a PN junction diode Hence, whenever there is a forward bias requirement, instead of going for a costly Gina diode, it's simple one is go for a PN junction diode. If Gina diode is operate, used in a circuit, always it's better to advise to use it in the reverse bias. Forward bias, better to use PN junction diode instead of Gina diode if you want to use it. In reverse bias also, we are not operating in this region. In this region, current is zero. Then what is the use? Suddenly current increases by maintaining the voltage constant in this region, Gina diode is used. That means Gina diode is up, it has to be connected in reverse bias, in forward bias, same as PN junction diode. Okay, in Gina diode, under reverse bias condition, if you operate it in the breakdown region, it finds some applications, why that all these things will see. Okay, these are the difference between VA characteristics of a PN junction diode and Gina diode. This region is called breakdown region. The voltage called breakdown voltage are Gina voltage. V voltage. Next. In a Gina diode, there are two types of breakdown taking place. First one, avalanche breakdown. Second one, Gina breakdown, avalanche breakdown and Gina breakdown. Now first we'll see the avalanche breakdown. Avalanche breakdown. Consider a crystal. There are so many atoms are there and some free electrons are there and here atom some atoms are there ok there are some free electrons also there right now initially assume that no free electrons available all are forms a covalent bond now you are applying an external field that means you are giving an external energy. Therefore, let us suppose one of the electron acquires the energy and it becomes a free electron hole will be created. A, a free electron is generated now. This is hole is generated. Now what is going to happen is right now previously started with zero electrons. If you give external energy, so one of example one electron acquires the energy therefore it comes out of the nucleus force it becomes a free electron there are more than one for for understanding purpose right now i have taken one one is taken out becomes a free electron now what is going to happen this free electron acquires the energy from this field acquires the energy means it becomes more it is having more energy and it will and it's a free electron it's moving like this whenever it is moving it is colliding with this atom okay it is colliding with this atom when a fast moving electron hits a stationary atom what is going to happen law of conservation of energy taken place what is the meaning this electron will lose some of its energy some of its energy will be lost by this electron then who is getting that who is gaining that energy some energy has to be cannot be destroyed cannot be created 
it one form of energy can be converging on our form that's all that's so it is losing the sum of its energy means somebody has to gain who is gaining this valence electron acquires the energy from this one when it's bombarded so what is going to happen this electron acquiring energy it becomes free electron so one more initially started with zero electrons free electrons then they became one the one became two now this acquires the energy this also acquires the energy therefore let us suppose it's free, randomly moving randomly moving therefore it's moving like this it's moving like this this also acquiring the energy this also further once again acquires the energy from this field therefore it will move like this this will bombard with one this one will bombard with one okay therefore what is going to happen this energy, electron acquires the energy this electron acquires the energy the two number become four free electrons don't assume that only why it has to move like this why it has to move like this means in 1 cm 10 power 25 atoms will be there 1.5 into 10 power 10 or 10 power 15 atoms per centimeter cube that many number of atoms will be there okay and free electron can move randomly whenever it is moving from here to here once again there is an atom will be there colli collision taking place oh, for simplicity i have taken four or five but here 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 so, so many free electron uh, free uh, the, sorry not free electron atom will be there once it is moving one more atom comes collide collision taking place okay if you take more number of atoms 10 power 15 or 10 power 25 atoms per centimeter cube like that we see we have seen problems these many collisions are continuously taking place that means free na electrons are going on generating this four becomes eight becomes 16 becomes 32 this multiplication process is called avalanche multiplication and within a fraction of time the number of free electrons are become so large that suddenly current increases and voltage remains constant okay that means it, without any change in the external voltage after certain point of time if you give sufficient energy that is if this electron acquires the sufficient energy then suddenly the number of electrons becomes so large that current rapidly increases but voltage nearly remains constant this breakdown this uh, type of breakdown is called avalanche breakdown this multiplication phenomena is called avalanche multiplication and the breakdown phenomena happening due to this one is called avalanche breakdown generally avalanche breakdown will happen for breakdown voltages of greater than 6 volts that means here this break voltage vz is greater than 6 volts means avalanche breakdown will have will be taken place once again another important point is in zener diode only zener breakdown will take place as well as avalanche breakdown will take place it's not zener diode is separate avalanche breakdown is avalanche diode is separate in zener diode only both zener breakdown will take place avalanche breakdown will be taken place but the still the name is given as scientist invented that person that's called it's zener diode only if in a zener diode if the breakdown voltage is greater than 6 volts then that type of breakdown is called avalanche breakdown is clear the next one avalanche breakdown is having positive temperature coefficient what is the meaning of positive temperature coefficient as temperature increases as temperature increases the breakdown voltage increases that means assume that at room temperature breakdown is happened at 8 volts if you increase the temperature the breakdown will happen at more than 8 volts example 10 volts at room temperature breakdown is happened at 8 volts then at higher temperature increase temperature is increased to some 100 degree centigrade then breakdown will happen will taken place at higher voltages that is 10 volts that is called positive temperature coefficient why it is why it is having positive temperature coefficient because of avalanche multiplication there are electron free electrons are increasing or not 
Now your increasing temperature means some of the covalent bonds are acquiring the thermal energy. Along with the external energy, some of the free electrons are generated. Because of the thermal energy, because if temperature is increased, some of the covalent bonds acquires the energy known as thermal energy. They are acquiring the thermal energy means I explained previous sessions. Thermal energy acquired means the covalent bonds are broken, free electrons are further increased. The area is same, the number of electrons are so large that the this number of collisions, okay, you see here there is a, instead of moving here, they, they may collide with the wall, otherwise there is one more free electron is there. What is going to happen, instead of hitting like this, it's, that means it's losing energy vastly. It will get the energy, but it is losing without creating any extra electrons. Okay, the number of collisions between the are between the free electrons increases as well as with the walls boundaries are going to increase. So what is going to happen? Compared to expected previously because of random motion because of unwanted collisions the breakdown will uh, uh, they are continuously losing some of its energy in the form of heat. They are hitting the boundaries means it is in the form of heat. They lose some of its energy. Therefore, extra, extra energy is required from external source to get the sufficient number of electrons to have a breakdown voltage. Okay? That same example comes with the meta metals. Metals are having positive temperature coefficient of resistance. As temperature increases, resistance increases. Because same area, number of electrons are so large that the number of unwanted collisions are increasing. Energy is lost in, within the collisions only. Therefore, breakdown is happened at higher voltages if temperature is increased because number of electrons are so large that unwanted collisions with the boundaries and between the uh, free electrons unwanted collision taken place. Therefore, continuously they are losing some of energy in the form of heat. Therefore, like you require the the diode requires extra energy, therefore it breakdown is happened at higher voltages. It's clear? GNR breakdown? Sorry, avalanche breakdown. Now comes to the second one. This breakdown is ha will happen le less than 6 volts. The breakdown voltage is less than 6 volts, then GNR breakdown will be taken place. What is meant by GNR? Now, other important thing is avalanche breakdown, if doping is small also, avalanche breakdown can take place. But the GNR breakdown has to be taken place, means compulsory doping should be high. If doping is not so high also, avalanche breakdown will take place. It's, there is no constraint for having high doping level for avalanche breakdown to happen, taken place. Whereas GNR breakdown has to take place means doping is very high. Clear? Now, what is the meaning of this doping is very high? If doping is very high, that means NAR, NDR, very high. We know that E equals to maximum electric field. Electric field max equals to E, N, D, W, W, P, uh, sorry, W, N by epsilon. That means the doping is very high. Electric field is also very high. That means if the doping is very high, electric field is very high. If the electric field is very high, now the covalent bonds are having electric field in the form of like this curves. One is having the like this electric field, like this, like this electric field. There are two covalent bonds are side by side with each other. Then the covalent bonds are direct rupture of, rupture means like this, rupture of the covalent bonds will be taken place. Rupture is taking place means what is the meaning? Energy transfer taken place. That means one of the covalent bond is giving some of its energy to 
another covalent bond. That means this covalent bond is acquiring the energy, means the electrons are acquiring the energy. That means covalent bonds are broken, free electron hole pair are going to be generated. There are so many number of covalent bonds are there, 10 power 25 atoms are there means 10 power 25 atoms per centimeter cube or 10 power 15 atoms per centimeter cube are there means that many number of covalent bonds are given there. At certain point of time there are so many number of co uh, rupture of the covalent bonds are to taken place. Rupture means like this. So one of the covalent bond is giving some of its energy to another covalent bond therefore free electron hole pair is generated. There are so many number of uh, electrons are generated at a short duration, therefore current increases rapidly. Because of, once again I am repeating, because of strong electric field, direct rupture of the covalent bond will be taken place. That type of breakdown is called, that phenomenon is called Gnr phenomena, breakdown phenomena and that type of breakdown is called Gnr breakdown. Gnr breakdown will have less than 6 volts and the Gnr diode, is, Gnr breakdown is having negative temperature coefficient. What is the meaning of negative temperature coefficient? Their rupture one is losing some of its energy to another one. Now to break this covalent bond you require certain energy. Now you are increasing temperature. You are increasing temperature means you are also giving the thermal energy. You are giving thermal energy, rupture is taking place. So due to rupture you require small amount of energy because you are giving additional energy due to temperature. You are giving additional energy due to temperature, they, um, uh, that is called thermal, thermal energy. Therefore, the amount of energy required to break the covalent bonds are going to be reduced. Therefore, breakdown will happen at lesser voltages. Therefore, Gnr breakdown is having negative temperature coefficient. Is clear? Next point. For Gnr breakdown to be taken place, it has to be heavily doped. For avalanche breakdown has to be taken place, normal doping is sufficient. Less than 6 volts, Gnr breakdown take, will take place. Greater than 6 volts, avalanche breakdown will be taking place. Gnr breakdown is having negative temperature quotient, avalanche breakdown is having positive temperature quotient. Applications of Gnr diode. Where we are using Gnr diode? Used in regulators. Gina diode acts as a regulator and it is called shunt regulator. What is meant by shunt? shunt? The Gina diode is connected in shunt, nothing but in parallel with the load. Okay? In regulator application, Gina diode is connected in parallel to the load, hence it is called shunt regulator or parallel regulator. What is meant by regulator? And where we are using regulator? Regulators are used in power supplies to maintain the out output voltage constant. To maintain the output voltage constant, uh, these regulators are used in power supplies. What is meant by regulator? Maintaining the output voltage constant. Regulator. Maintaining the output voltage constant. Irrespective of changes in the load resistance irrespective of the changes in the load resistance or supply voltage. Based on that one we are having two types of regulation. One is called load regulation, another one is called line regulation that we will see it in the tomorrow's session. What is meant by load regulation? What is meant by line regulation? Before closing the session we will take the questions. The first question, it is Srishma from Palakkar. Sir, I have read in Sedra and Smith that built-in potential cannot be measured using voltmeter. Okay. It is not the, because of the external source that, uh, because of the externally supplied voltage, it is not having that one. Okay. If you give, let us suppose PN junction connected to external source, then there is a voltage drop across the old uh, diode. That can be measured by using a voltmeter, external one. But built-in potential, that name itself says built-in, it's an internal potential, it cannot be measured. If you are applying external field or external voltage, because of that external voltage, if there is a voltage drop, that can be measured. Whereas internal one, it cannot be measurable. Clear? That's the reason. If, let us suppose forward bias or reverse bias you applied, because of that one there is a, some voltage drop will be there across the diode that can be measured. 
but internal voltage drop cannot be measured. Built in. That's why it is called built in. Clear? Next one. Sir, electric, will electric field will be maximum at the center even if one side is lightly doped, other side is heavily doped? Yes. Okay. Let us suppose, example, I will take this one. Here electric field is maximum. This is Wn, this is Wp. Or Wp, Wn. What is the meaning? P type semiconductor is heavily doped, N type semiconductor is lightly doped. Still, electric field is maximum at the junction. So, with respect of the doping level, electric field will be maximum at the junction, that is at the center one. Clear, Srishma? Next, Piyush. Sir, in the last question, if diode D2 is in reverse bias, then it will be open circuit, the circuit, then how the current will flow through the circuit? Correct. Good question. The thing is, if you are taking an ideal diode, it is replaced by open circuit. If you see, I gave ideal case, short circuit and open circuit. You are asking about diode D2, why you are not asked about the diode D1? If diode D2 ideal case re replaced by open circuit, diode D1 has to be replaced by short circuit. Then there is no voltage drop across V1. Clear? So ideal case it is replaced by open circuit and short circuit. Otherwise, we are assuming in under reverse bias condition very high resistance is offered. Under forward bias condition very low resistance is offered. And under forward bias condition there is a voltage drop that is cut in voltage will be existed. Clear? Piyush, next Piyush. Sir, please explain how Gina diode works on, how works on, ninth question. Sir, please explain how Gina diode works on the principle of tunneling of charge carriers across the junction. Ex one minute, Piyush. Sir, please explain how Gina diode works on the principle of tunneling of charge carriers across the junction. Sorry. Tunneling of the charge carriers across the junction will be taking place in the tunnel diode, not in the Gina diode. In Gina diode, tunneling will not be taken place. Okay? If you don't mind from where you, which textbook you have, uh, you have read that statement, please tell me that one. I will cross check it. As of my knowledge, tunneling has to be, will be taken in the tunnel diode. Therefore, the name itself is uh, given it as tunnel diode. But in Gina diode, there is no tunneling of charge carriers at all. Okay, that we will see it in the how tunnel diode tunneling takes place, that we will see it in the uh, tomorrow session only, it will come. It's clear, clear, just check it which textbook that is given for a Gina diode tunneling of charge carriers takes place and tell me in the tomorrow session so that I also cross checks, clear, but it's not that correct, if it is there, it's not a correct statement as of my knowledge. Clear Piyush, thank you.